Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. In one of our previous videos, we spoke about a type of wheel alignment called toe. If you haven't watched it, check for the link in the description below. Some of you would have seen the rear wheels of an auto rickshaw and thought, why do they have a weird tilt to their wheels? If you haven't, try looking at one. What do you think the purpose of this tilt would be? Well, don't worry, we'll talk a lot of interesting stuff about it in today's video. The tilt we see in the wheels is called camber. Camber is used to change the contact area of wheels with the road which in turn affects the grip of the wheels. The inward or outward tilt of the front wheels when viewed from the front is called camber and the angle between the plane of the wheel with respect to an imaginary vertical axis is the camber angle. When the wheels are inclined outward then it is called positive camber and when the wheels are inclined inward then it is called negative camber. So where is this camber used? Positive camber was used in classic cars which came from the 50s to the 70s. They had a positive camber angle of 0 to 1 degree. In modern days, positive camber is often seen on off-road, agricultural vehicles and vehicles that generally carry heavy loads. A negative camber can be found in modern cars with a camber angle of 0 to 2 degrees. It helps in improving cornering stability. Performance cars tends to have more negative camber angles so that they are stable at the high speed corners. So what role does camber play in vehicles? First let's talk about positive camber. In positive camber, as the load increases, it pulls the wheels straight, making them parallel to the ground, thereby increasing stability. So that's why the drivers insist on having maximum people in their auto rickshaw. Now, what happens when a vehicle with a positive camber corners? Let's take an example of a car turning left. The center of mass of the car is where all the forces act. So as the car turns left, a central force acts on the left direction and an opposing centrifugal force acts in the right direction. Due to this, the outer wheels or the wheels on the right hand side tilt out thereby losing more contact patch, whereas the inner wheels have very little contact patch. This reduces the stability of the car in the corner. So a positive camber is mostly avoided in modern vehicles. Now you might ask us, hey, then why did you mention that the classic cars, off-road and agricultural vehicles have positive camber? Well, back in those days, cars didn't have power steering. Since positive camber intended to have less contact patch with the road, it helped in reducing the steering effort. In off-road and agricultural vehicles, Uneven ground makes the vehicle stray on either side, which makes it difficult to steer. Even here, the positive camber helped reduce the steering effort. Talking about steering, we are working on an interesting video about power steering. So stay tuned for that, guys. Now, let's get back to the purpose of negative camber. Again, let's take an example of a car turning left. As discussed already, on the center of mass, the central force acts on the left and an opposite centrifugal force acts on the right. Due to this, the inner wheels or the wheels on the left-hand side have less grip and outer wheels or the wheels on the right hand side straighten making them parallel to the road. Hence the contact patch of the outer wheels is more which increases the grip of the wheels. Now here comes the interesting part of the video. How do we know that the camber angle is not perfect? Well it's simple. For example after a car corners for a long time you can measure the temperature of it and if you find that the inner surface of the tire has more temperature than the other sides, it's said to have high negative camber. An ideal camber angle is set in such a way that the temperature on the tires is evenly distributed. If you look into the owner's manual of a Maruti Suzuki Ritz, a negative camber angle of negative 1 degree is set for the front wheels of the car. Whereas in off-road vehicles like the Jeep Wrangler, a positive camber angle of plus 0 0.04 degrees is set for the front wheels of the car. Well, isn't that interesting? Next time when you go to a wheel alignment center, try observing the above. So that's all for this video, guys. We'll see you again in the next one. Until then, bye.